Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Hope you had an absolutely fantastic weekend. It was a uh, wasn't the most wonderful weekend for me in some ways, but hey, you know what? Overall, it was fine. Made it through it healthy. Here we are on Monday morning again, being able to share with you our morning musings, and I'm always, always glad to do that. And I, I, I want to tell you, I, I simply cannot express appropriately enough how much I appreciate you joining me here on Morning Musings. The, the private emails that I get are so humbling. They're so gratifying. The, even, you know, the, the private messages on Facebook, even those of you who disagree, that's fine. If you do that honorably, if you do that respectfully with decorum, that's fine. Dialogue is always wonderful. Uh, it's just, isn't this a fantastic time we're living in to be able to, to come together like this? I, I don't know how many of you tell me, especially privately, look, Don, I grab my cup of coffee. I even, wa I even watch you on my way to work on, uh, you know, in the car. Well, hey, be careful, okay? <laughs> but anyway, I, I genuinely do appreciate you being with me. Okay, we're looking at the nature of the kingdom. We are told by representatives of all three of the futurist views of eschatology that one day Jesus has to come back to earth in a physical body, rule over a physical kingdom. Now, yes, there, there are subsets who deny that. I was raised as a fifth generation member of the Churches of Christ in the all-millennial world. We certainly did not believe there would ever be a physical kingdom on earth with Jesus ruling in a physical body. <clears throat> it was taught then and is still taught now that at his coming, the earth is completely, I mean, totally obliterated. The cosmos itself is completely destroyed. There is no earthly kingdom of Jesus. So it's important that you understand that there are subsets of the futurist view. Well, I shared with you that the nature of the kingdom is re revealed to us when we look at the Old Testament prophecies and how the New Testament writers interpret those prophecies. In Ezekiel chapter 37, which is one of the great, great Old Testament prophecies of the establishment of the Messianic kingdom, God said he would make a new covenant. Ezekiel and Jeremiah both made the same promise. Jeremiah 31, 29 and following, the days are coming, says the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Jacob. Not according to the covenant that I made with them when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Israel, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with them, says the Lord. I will put my law in their heart, write it in their minds, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. They will no more say or teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they will all know me from the least to the greatest. Now look, this is extremely critical. This promise of the new covenant, as I suggested in our last video from last Thursday, please go back and look at that. This gives us direct insight into the nature of the kingdom. And it helps us because when we look at what modern day attitudes are toward the new covenant, we see a sharp contrast. Let me illustrate. In the dispensational world, it is taught that the promised new covenant of Ezekiel 37 and Jeremiah 31 have not been established. Now, if you deny that, I wrote a book entitled The New Covenant, Fulfilled or Future. <clears throat> I document from some of the leading dispensationalists of the day of how they say emphatically and explicitly that the promised Jeremiah covenant has not been established. And it will not be established until the second coming of Jesus at the beginning of the millennium. But you just simply have to catch the power of this. Those who teach that the promised Jeremiah covenant has not yet been established they teach us that in this promised earthly kingdom, when it is finally established, Jerusalem, physical Jerusalem, will once again be the capital of the kingdom. Now, a question for those amillennialists and postmillennialists who believe in an earthly kingdom. 
do you believe physical Jerusalem will be the physical center of the kingdom? If not, why not? Point number two, the dispensationalists tell us that there will be a physical temple rebuilt in Jerusalem. Question for all millennialists and post-millennialists who believe in a future physical kingdom. Will there be a physical temple? If not, why not? I mean, after all, if the kingdom is physical, why isn't the temple physical? Point number three, the dispensationalists tell us there will be animal sacrifices offered once again in the physical temple by a physical Zadokite priesthood. Question for all millennialists and post-millennialists, will there be animal sacrifices offered once again? Now look, all millennialists and post-millennialists tell us absolutely not, that is abhorrent. Well, wait a minute. You are arguing for a physical kingdom and the dispensationalists take the identical prophecies of the Old Covenant that you sometimes refer to for a physical kingdom and they are more consistent in their application. If you're going to argue for a physical kingdom, why will there not be a physical city, a physical temple, a physical sacrificial cultus once again? And you say, well, uh, you see, those things under Torah, they were typological of the spiritual things of Christ. Aha, bingo. That means that the physical kingdom of Israel typified the spiritual kingdom of Jesus Christ. Therefore, in rejecting, in rejecting the physical city, the physical temple, the physical sacrifices of the old covenant or of the messianic kingdom, the amillennialist and the postmillennialist are thereby falsifying their own concept of a future physical kingdom. Look, I, had, I develop all of this in a whole lot more in this book, The New Covenant, Fulfilled or Future. By the way, it's available on Kindle, okay? I cannot pay the shipping on this because the, the book itself is so cheap, all right? But go to my website, eschatology.org or bibleprophecy.com and order this book. I want to tell you, this book is a dynamic refutation of the futurist view of a physical kingdom ruled by a physical Jesus. The New Covenant concept tells us and demands that the kingdom is spiritual. So when Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 said the Old Covenant was passing away, i.e. the old kingdom was passing away, and the new covenant was coming in, and the new covenant had no place for a physical land, a physical city, a physical temple, and a physical priesthood. We have proof positive. Jesus never planned, predicted, or prophesied a physical kingdom. Get yourself a copy of the book. You'll be absolutely amazed at the evidence that is there. Thanks for joining on this me on this morning's morning musings. Yeah, we got a whole lot more and we'll see you on the flip side.